Hi, I'm Margaret and thank you so much for joining me here on The Gardening Me. We have just gotten back from holiday. We've been away for a week and a half in sunny Florida, a little too sunny if you ask me. It was hot, hot. I kind of went away from hot, hot and went too hot, hot. Don't know what we were thinking. But anyway, that's okay. Um, it was relaxing nonetheless. So now I'm back though, and there is quite a bit of work that needs to be done in the garden. Specifically, there's harvesting to be done. And some of it will be harvesting to go into the kitchen. Others will be harvesting to go into the compost because I already see there are a few things here that are kind of over the... Uh, best before date so and there's some weeding to be done and some deadheading I think to do as well of the cut flowers so I thought I would just take you along I have my harvesting basket and I have my whatever goes in the compost bin <laughs> Okay, so first things first, this is actually a corner of the raised bed garden here. This beautiful vine is a Black Eyed Susan, and actually it's a vine that I completely forgot, I'll get some footage of it after, and I completely forgot to put it in my last video. And it is also an annual that I grew from seed. It is two varieties in here. One is Blushing Susie and the other one is Cosmic Mix. And at this point, I think I only see Blushing Susie. I think I had two or three of each in this pot. I just kind of shoved it in this pot and I'm loving it here actually because it's going through the fence and it's just gorgeous. But anyhow, what I'm doing here is this. This is my nemesis in this garden, and what this is is bindweed, and there really isn't much you can do about it. What I tend to do, and what actually has been working really well in the past couple of years, is simply continuous picking. I don't normally wait until it gets this rampant. Um, as soon as I see, you know, a little bit come up, I will pull it, and usually after like a couple of years you definitely do see a difference and I've seen a huge difference in the rest of the garden this area here that we're in was actually grass previously before the fence went up last year so in these areas it's still very rampant and it's going to take a couple of years to get under control but like I said I've been away and it has gone crazy here so first thing I'm going to do is just clean all this up I just kind of get in there with my fingers depending on how I'm feeling. I might use gloves because I am dealing with mulch and you can get slivers, but I find I have more control and I can get more of the root if I'm not using gloves. So today I'm not using gloves. One of the things about bindweed though, pulling it up, is it's one of those satisfying things when you pull it up. It's not so satisfying when a week later you see it coming up again. <laughs> but the roots of bindweed go way, way, way down. I mean, they are 10 feet, 20 feet long. I don't know. They can be ridiculously long. So there is no point trying to get the full root because it also breaks very easily. So the, the whole point behind what I'm doing now is to get rid of all the top growth and any bit of root that I can that's easily pulled out when I pull out the top and just continuously do that. And the whole point is it will eventually weaken the plant. And if I keep on it, it will at some point, and like I said, it takes a couple of years, um, become so weak that it just won't grow back. And this has worked relatively well in the rest of the raised bed area that I have been working on for a few years. But these areas that were grass, because there is a ton of bindweed in our grass, well, these are basically starting fresh now. I'm not sure if I mentioned, but 
Uh, bindweed roots are not only very long, but also very brittle. So you can't really dig them out because they will just break into little tiny pieces. And then you will have, instead of one plant, 20 plants. <laughs> And that's actually one of the reasons why you should never ever rototill an area that has bindweed in it because that will not kill it that will just make hundreds and thousands of little babies and i'm just gonna show here what actually bindweed looks like that's what it looks like kind of like arrow shaped leaves this is the root end here and it can be hugely long this is a tiny one here but it gets pretty big if you let it so from this little corner not huge this is how much i have just from this little corner. That's how crazy this weed gets. So here are the beans and I do see, oh, some a little bit over mature. If you, when you start seeing them kind of bulge out like that, that is a little too far gone. I'm not sure how many, I did do a really good harvest before we left. I'm not sure how many more will be in here. I do see a few more flowers. I'm just gonna go through and harvest everything that I see here, regardless of how ripe it is, and then I will sort through it afterwards. And if I feel they're a little bit too far gone, then I will compost it. But there's quite a few I think I see in here that are a really good size. I do have a, um, another video on when I first sowed these beans and when I did one of the first harvests of the beans where I described each variety I'm growing and I did that first picking. Um, so I will link those videos down below. It looks like several of these varieties are done because I'm not even seeing any flowers in this section here. This one is Strike. That's the variety name. And I'm pretty sure I'll be able to just pull up these plants this week because there really isn't very much at all left in here. Okay, I think I'm good. So, for beans, this is what I ended up harvesting. And like I said, some of these are way past their prime. I'll just be throwing these in the compost, but I'll sort through those once I get them in the kitchen. So, let's carry on now to, oh, before we carry on, let's take a quick peek here. Let's take a quick peek at the sunflower. Remember a couple of weeks ago, I did a tour of all the flowers I grew from seed this year. And I spoke about this particular sunflower that self-seeded here that I had nothing to do with. And it is blooming. I was actually worried it was gonna bloom while I was away. And it's just started now. Look at this. You know what, let me see if I can bend this over here and just get a better, there we go. I get a better image of what this looks like. Isn't this gorgeous? I am definitely saving seeds from this. So now these are the dahlias that I grew this year. Some of these are from saved 
tubers that I had from last year. Oh, look at this bee going crazy over that. That is Kelsey Annie Joy, that particular variety. That one is new to me this year. And anyhow, so some of these I have to deadhead. And with dahlias, sometimes it's difficult to tell because it looks similar, the blooms that have already bloomed versus those that are budding. But if you take a look, this one here, when it's kind of a cone shape like that, those are ones that have already bloomed. So this I'll be deadheading. The ones that are, oh, here's a good example. This one like here, for example, that one has not bloomed yet. The ones that are flattish on the end, kind of round and flat, those are yet to bloom. So do not touch those. I love seeing that so much. There are a lot of bees and pollinators on these dahlias. There are so many buds on this. Oh, exciting. I'm also taking off any that are basically past their prime, like this one here. There's no point in waiting another day or two. I'm here, I'm doing it, so just get it done. The more you cut, the more they'll produce. So you don't want to wait around if something's not looking the best. So here's Reason Traub, and I have quite a lot of picking to do here, it looks like. And all of these look fantastic. A lot better than the ones in my regular tomato bed, that's for sure. So this is what Reason Traub looks like. So here we are. So this is where I'm at now. I can see there's at least one eggplant to be harvested here, which is right here. And this is a farmer's long eggplant. I probably could have kept this one on the vine a little bit longer, but that's fine. Let's see if there's anything else. All these other ones are pretty small still. Oh, actually, there is a pink tongue that I am going to harvest as well. And here's the pink tongue. This one is definitely ready. At this point, I don't think I'm going to harvest any peppers. I could harvest these. These are the pepperoncino, and they're definitely a good size. They're probably going to start turning color at this size, but I'm going to just leave them. I'm going to leave them for now because I have a lot of other things to harvest. There are no peppers that need harvesting imminently right now, so I'm going to leave those. Ooh, the parsley is looking glorious. I see some chimichurri in our future, but not today. <laughs> Today, I am going to pass by the parsley. Oh, my. <laughs> okay. Before I harvest the cucumbers, let me make a comment here about these cucumber plants. Look at the difference. Here on this side, we have Tasty Treat right at the far end. Beside that is Garden Sweet, which is actually one of the most productive pickling type cucumbers that I've ever grown. Beside that is Summer Dance, which is this one here. And then here, this one is um, Green Finger. That's it. Now, one thing I am noticing that I've never really noticed before, I w was originally saying when I first started harvesting the cucumbers that this one here, the green finger, wasn't overly productive. And so I was pretty much confident that I was going to get rid of it um, and, and that would be it. Now, the thing is that this plant is exceptionally healthy looking, as is the summer dance beside it compared to the other two down there, which are more or less done from powdery mildew. Uh, they are done in. There is no saving this. I mean, look at this. 
Oh, I'm going to just see what happens. I might not give, give this one um, a thumbs down in my garden that quickly. If it can keep producing after other varieties have come from powdery mildew, that's a huge deal. So the jury is definitely still out on whether or not I will um, be getting rid of this one from my lineup or not. So we'll see. Okay. Oh my. <laughs> oh my goodness. Look, at <laughs> look at this thing. But you know what the strange thing is? What variety is this? I'm thinking this is summer dance. This is the strange thing. For me, a cucumber is, is not necessarily too far gone to eat just because it's large. For me, a, a bigger telltale sign is when it starts getting that kind of lightish color, um, kind of yellowish. This is still vibrant green. So this is going in the kitchen, not in the compost, and I'm going to see how it is. Because a lot of these larger ones, they're still fine, they're still sweet, they just have larger seed cavities. And for me, that's not a big deal, because I'll peel this, I will just remove the seed cavities, and it will still have beautiful, white, tender, sweet, crisp flesh <laughs> inside. I see quite a few of these green fingers here, but none are totally ready yet. I do see here a summer dance that is ready. This is more your typical size. <laughs> so see this? Too far gone. This one is going to go right in the compost. I think what I am going to do is I'm going to just take a bunch of these leaves off right now and these do not go in the compost these are going to go in the garbage so this not only will help avoid spreading the uh, powdery mildew but it will also give a little bit more air circulation which will help the remaining plants hopefully not get it or delay it anyway. That looks so much better. So healthy, healthy vines still on this side. The really, really bad garden sweet all gone. And there it is, there's my pile. So I'm just going to get rid of these as well. Bells of Ireland. Okay. These have served me very well. Ooh, look at how long this is. This is... Look at how tall this thing is. <laughs> this is, I don't know, what, three feet? Wow. Crazy. It's not even going to fit in my thing here. There we go. Okay. So... What is this? This is a weed. <laughs> okay, so this, a lot of deadheading to do. So I am just going to get to it. We have snapdragons here. And here are a ton of scabiosa that need to be deadheaded. The bees are loving the scabiosa. Woo. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> okay, so these are a little bit finicky to deadhead, I would say. I'm just going to kind of go in. I'm not going to even worry about going all the way down on the stem. I'm just going to quickly take the seed heads off. And you can leave the seed heads, I guess. I mean, they are interesting looking. But if you leave them on, then you'll probably be cutting down on the flowers because the plants will start concentrating on developing those seeds 
and stop pushing out as many blooms. And now I'm going to just start going on to the zinnias. There's a lot that need to be deadheaded that are either damaged or a little bit past their prime. I'm just cutting these to deadhead and not for flowers, in which case I might take a longer stem if I needed it. I will go down and here, see if I can zoom in on this here. So here, this one here, if I go down, there is a branch right here. Oh, take as much as you can now because this flower is going to be gone in two seconds. <laughs> and uh, there's one right on this side here. So that's what I want to go down. And whoop, gone? Yes, you are. Okay, so here is where I'm going to cut like that. So now these two will come out with uh, blooms. I actually did go through this entire bed and I deadheaded before I left as well just so that I wouldn't have a bunch of stuff going to seed when I was gone. Ooh, but I see some uh, straw flowers that are at the perfect stage for cutting. This I consider to be the perfect stage for cutting. So I'm actually going to cut all of these here and then hang them up to dry. And here we are. Aren't they gorgeous? This is Pink Swiss Giant or something like that. I'll put the name on the screen. There's still a lot left, but I gave it quite the good cleanup. And this is a full bucket here. Okay, and here is the other bed, and this is full of asters and more zinnias and some more dahlias. Okay, so <laughs> once again, I don't know what it is about timing, but my neighbor is out mowing the lawn. Just clip all of the ones that are basically done. These are actually quite floppy, I'm noticing. These Queenie Limes are actually surprising me because I see a few that need deadheading, but the majority of them are looking amazing. And they were looking amazing before I left too. They have quite the staying power. Hello. <laughs> so there's only a few here that I'm gonna cut, not many at all. And these are the seed sown dahlias and in my last video there weren't many blooms but now quite a few and just like in the other case see here's one that's already bloomed that needs to go there's another one that needs to go but here is a fresh bud here that's going to bloom soon so here is the tomato bed and there is a bit to pick, not a whole lot. Unfortunately, we actually ended up having a little rain when we were away. And when I say a little, I mean a lot of rain. And we ended up getting a lot of this splitting. So, and oh, of course, we also got some of this. I don't know whether it fell off and animals got to it or whether the animals took it off, but I will spare you the kind of gross aspect of me having to deal with that. There are a few uh, good ones that I will be picking for the kitchen, such as this one here. 
look at these guys. These are one of my favorite tomatoes in terms of, hey, good looking. <laughs> this is Costoluto Genovese and they taste really nice as well. So if they're not gonna taste good, I mean, there's only so far looks will get you, right? And there's a few here on the vine. Uh, I think there's one more I can pick here. There, a little tiny one. This is pretty small for what these uh, generally get to. I would say maybe one and a half times this size would be pretty standard. With tomatoes though, as the season progresses, they do get smaller in size. The first ones you pick are usually the biggest, but this year, all of my tomatoes have been basically pretty small because of the rather dry conditions and the sandy soil that these beds have so and here's the apple yellow and unfortunately a lot of these have split as well you can still use them i guess if they are not too bad and they haven't started rotting because really that's the main issue with splitting is that when they split they start rotting a lot more quickly so but if it's just recent i mean this looks like a pretty recent split that would be perfectly fine to eat so i'm just going to pick as much as i can from this particular plant this one for example i mean you can tell this one is yuck <laughs> So you don't want that one. Generally speaking, I don't have issues with splitting on these kind of tomatoes, but I'm actually, wow, this is actually pretty bad because every single one has split. Let's see, this one isn't fully ripe yet. Okay, so I have one that hasn't split and that's because it's not fully ripe. You can see the difference in color here. This one is much more orange. So I think I will be picking as much as I can from this and I'll be concentrating as well on the ones that are not fully ripe yet but that are just yellowish right now because if I leave them on the plant chances are they will end up splitting. I'm not sure if we're getting any more rain in the next little while but I'm not going to take the chance. Oof. Oof. Bad. <laughs> oh. Wow. Okay, so the, here I'm growing a variety called Blush. And this one is very susceptible to cracking, obviously. Look at this. All of these are like that. I've actually never quite seen anything like it. So if you have issues with frequent um, rainfalls that cause tomatoes to crack, then this blush variety probably isn't for you. Look at this, every single one. So I'm hoping that the rain we had, apparently it was quite the rain for a day or two, um, we're not going to have a repeat of that and some of these are able to be salvaged because the green ones are looking totally fine. They are not cracked at all. I have harvested, I think, a few from this vine already. Um, maybe, I don't know, four or five tomatoes before we went away. So I'm hopeful there's a lot here and the plant itself looks quite healthy still. So there's promise, there's promise in that. And broccoli, yeah, this broccoli, all of it is blown. So I'm just going to go back down here and just take what I can. These, I have a few side shoots I can harvest this one is probably a little too much so that's going to go compost and i have a few in here i can harvest as well uh, these are slightly 
blown. I don't know. I'm going to harvest them, see what happens. I think they should still be still be okay these I mean the ones that are flowering well, maybe not there's a couple in this bunch that are not that great uh, I'm just gonna get rid of that one and harvest these guys in here well there's one here that's looking pretty good you know what I'm gonna harvest this one right now I'm not sure I'm gonna get anything else out of this uh, this particular plant so I'll get what I can because I have a feeling this is going to be it and I'm not really seeing anything else come up so I might just pull this whole thing the beds are looking pretty good there's still quite a bit to harvest but the majority of it are leafy greens and as I said I'll probably be doing a mass harvest later on this week where I will be doing quite a bit of preserving on those and everything else that was imminent I think was done the flowers are coming along beautifully I'm so excited that the dahlias are finally coming to life um, it's been slow going on those so it's great to see them all sort of explode as well as that sunflower mm. I better get some of those seeds before the birds do because I am definitely going to try saving seed for that I was actually not sure what I would find I'm a little disappointed I have to say at the state of the tomatoes I mean the tomatoes in the regular bed are nothing to write home about this year absolutely but I really didn't expect all that cracking I'm shocked I've, I've never experienced this in all my years of gardening I've had lots of tomatoes that have cracked but I've never had it rampant throughout the entire bed so it's just a little bit of a shocker and also goes to show that every year is different right you never know what to expect um, because things will surprise you each and every year both good and bad anyhow thank you so much for joining me today and we will see you next time bye, -bye.